Britain is in the throes of a shopaholic frenzy. We're all buying more stuff than we could ever possibly need. I've spent £100,000 no. easily. But what if you never, ever threw anything away? There's just so much stuff. What if instead of owning your possessions, your possessions owned you? We can't move in this room, can we? It's just a pigsty, isn't it? In this series, shopaholic hoarders get a short, sharp shock as they confront the possessions burying them alive. How did all that fit in our apartment? Good God. This is my living room. I'm sleeping on the floor. This is an extreme collector. Desperate to tackle their hoarding habit once and for all, their homes will be purged of their overwhelming hoard. DVDs, magazines, toys, clothes, the lot. Is that honestly all mine? When you see it all laying out like this, doesn't it make you wonder how you've managed to function? <laughs> Experts will sell off their stuff and use the money to redesign their homes. But will they be able to part with their prized possessions? I'm not selling it for less than two, Nick, I'm sorry. It's going terribly. Will these mountains of trash ever turn up hidden treasures? How can you have 50 single shoes? And will transforming their homes really transform their lives? Oh, it's wonderful. This is the business. Oh, wow. It's like a home rather than <laughs> like a student pap. I love it. There's a way to make an entrance. This is my destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. In the heart of the picturesque suburb of the Wirral in Cheshire is this well-maintained block of flats. But on the top floor, there's an apartment with a guilty secret. It's chock-a-block crammed full of an unbelievable amount of possessions. It all belongs to just one man, 57-year-old Ray Byrne. I suppose you could say I've been collecting for a very long time, and my hoard has taken over my life, really. I can't lead a normal life. The junk's taking over. I obviously don't have a bath in here too often. The last time I got over to that window to let some daylight in was probably over five years ago. Ray's collections are now so out of control the bedroom, living room and balcony are completely overrun with an enormous amount of retro gadgets, old clothes and broken electrical equipment. My hoarding is a problem because I can't move, I can't do anything. The gas man can't get to the gas fire to service the gas fire. And uh, I'm cold. In fact, Ray hasn't had heating for the last four years. Ray's hoard is so overwhelming he can't use the balcony and it's virtually impossible to even enter his bedroom, meaning he now has to sleep in the front room. This is my living room. Uh, doubles up as a bedroom, actually, because I'm sleeping on the floor. Having friends round to the flat is not a regular occurrence. I don't invite people around to my flat because I'm embarrassed about the state of the place. But one of the few friends he does allow into his home is Julie Thomas. This is it. This um, is as far as I can get. Yeah. When I came in here for the first time and saw Ray's flat, it was very overwhelming. <laughs> for the last year, she's been trying to help Ray get rid of his hoard, but with little success. Um, What's in here? Can I go? Ah, uh, no, not those, cos they go... <laughs> What's this? I don't know. Can I have a look in here? OK. Ah, it's Bakelite phones. Yes! <laughs> yes, you can't have those. Get off. I don't know how Ray can live here. You can't have a bath. You haven't got a cooker. I can't imagine living like this. Ray's collecting has spiralled out of all control. But to a lesser extent, many of us can relate to this kind of mindless hoarding. Across our lifetime, each of us will generate over three tonnes of electrical waste. On average, each UK household has around four old, unused phones 
amounting to a staggering 50 million nationwide. And as a country, we generate enough electrical waste to fill Wembley Stadium six times over. But Ray has had enough. I feel now I am ready to get rid of stuff because it's got out of hand, because I can't lead a proper normal life. Uh, I would like people to come uh, to visit me. Here to help Ray regain control of his home and his life are Nick Allen and Abigail Ahern. Wow. There's a lot of stuff in here, Nick. This is serious, Abby. Oh, no Nick is an international dealer with 10 years' experience of buying and selling collectibles. It's his job to sell off as much of Ray's hoard as he can. I've gained an expertise which allows me to spot the hidden value in items other people might miss. Then my job is to get as much money as I can before the deal goes sour. The money raised will fund a redesign of the key rooms in Ray's home by interior designer Abigail Ahern. The most important thing for me is that my clients have spaces that they totally love and adore because then there won't be any inclination to fill them with stuff. Between them, they'll transform Ray's living space and by doing so, hope to end his buying and hoarding obsession. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out what room we're actually standing in. This is normally the lounge. Uh, doubles as my bedroom sometimes. Where's the sofa? Uh, <laughs> good question. Where's the bed? The bed, in actual fact, is what we're almost standing on now. Oh, this is where you. I've started. Are these actually seriously what you sleep on? Because you can't yeah. get a proper night's sleep on a, on a cushion like this. I would like to see my skirting boards. Some... Floor, Ray, would be nice. A, a bit floor, of floor. Yeah, I'd like to see a floor. bit of floor. Yes, a bit. Yes. Maybe a chair would also be quite <laughs> yes. nice. And a window. I'd quite like to see a window. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel about it? I don't know how Ray copes with it. Um, he can't have friends back. Mm. Um, he enjoys cooking, which he can't do anymore because he hasn't got room for a cooker. Um, but the kitchen's just as bad. Yeah. I mean, how did you end up here? Well, I consider myself a collector. I collect uh, printers and cameras. And that's got out of hand. It's turned into hoarding. And how does it affect you personally? I mean, living and sleeping in very sort of close quarters. Well, I don't actually invite people in here. You don't? Is that because you're embarrassed? Yeah, yeah. You're in a place now where you want us to help you? Yes. Nick and Abby want to explore Ray's hoard to find out more about him and see the scale of what they're dealing with. Wow. Oh, my God, Nick. That's not even funny, is it? That's a, that's a bedroom. Where's the bed? It's under that lot. I really want Nick and Abby to help me get rid of stuff. I, I'm up for it. Uh, the time is right. <sighs> In amongst the clutter are some pieces of real interest. Quite a few cameras, no? Yeah, but look, everything's digital these days, unless these are seriously vintage with good lenses. I'm guessing that's not worth a lot. And that's not all. There's a lot of phones here. Are they worth anything? Yeah, definitely. I mean, these Bakelite ones, if the cases aren't cracked, quite a bog-standard model, but in perfect condition. 40 quid. Oh, more phones? Wow. I think there's... Maybe half a dozen, ten. That's good. Look, we've got to stay positive. I mean, even 50 lots at 20 quid each, that's a thousand pound. I mean, there's going to be some stuff here. You've got so much stuff. Yes, that's all I can say. <laughs> you can't deny it, can you? No. It's the truth. You've yeah. got tons and tons <laughs> of stuff in this You've tiny got... flat. Well, we've got a solution. We'll get the removals guys to clear everything that's in here. Yeah. Take it to the warehouse. Uh -huh. Spread everything out so that we can see exactly what you've got. Mm. I need to start afresh, so I'm ready to do it. With Ray keen to get started, the removal men get to work. Look at this, Kelly. Oh. Block. At the warehouse, he'll see just how out of control his collecting has become. The hope is that it will motivate him to change. The floorboards will be creaking when we get this lot of <laughs> concrete. I made sure. I made sure this was concrete before I got it. I want this to work. I see today as a big change in my life. Yeah, as 
a milestone. Uh, hopefully things will change for the better. I think this is a massive day in Ray's life because this has been part of his life. This is part of Ray. In terms of antique dealing, this is a tall order. It really is a challenge. A lot of the items are either low value or they're broken. I'm going to have to pull out all the stops to turn that stuff into good money. While his flat is cleared, Ray moves into a clutter-free hotel room, where he will sleep in a bed for the first time in over a year. Whoa, look at that. A bed, yes. Oh, wow. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm looking forward to having a sleep on this bed. So this is how normal people exist, hey? At the flat, the packers work late into the night. I've never seen anything like Laying this. on a scrap of floor. Oh, it kind of pulled at the heartstrings. We've got to tread quite carefully mm. and hold his hand along the way. I want everything. I loved every single thing that's in this whole place. I want to give us the maximum chance of getting the money. But I'm not convinced he's going to find him that easy. At the moment, he seems very OK. I'm not convinced. At the warehouse, Ray's entire hoard is unpacked and laid out, covering an area of three tennis courts. Just the scale of it is shocking. It includes over a kilometre of electrical cables, nearly half a tonne of old clothes, a military helmet, a Morse code machine and two dozen TVs. Who needs 24 tellies in a two-bed flat? Ray also has around 100 hi-fi separates, over 70-odd speakers, and a mountain of old computer equipment, much of it no longer working. We've all got a drawer somewhere in the house that's got maybe the odd mobile phone charger or some pointless piece of electrical equipment we're never going to use again. But Ray had a whole living room full. However, the collection of vintage cameras is far more promising. Ray's got maybe 100, 150 cameras and lenses here, which potentially are quite valuable. I think this is one of the better parts of Ray's hoard. Depending on the condition and manufacturer, the market for vintage cameras is thriving. Cameras by Hasselblad are much sought after. This was one of the first professional cameras with a wide-angle lens. It's now worth around £1,300. And this rare twin lens Rolleiflex is particularly collectible, value around £1,700. But the Rolls Royce of cameras are Leicas. The high standard of craftsmanship makes them extremely desirable. A Leica 3C from the 1940s, with this incredibly rare black motor accessory, would set you back four and a half grand. And this 1960s M2M Chrome New York model would fetch a staggering £5,000. If we sell them correctly, this is the ticket to at least one room in Ray's flat being redesigned. Other valuable vintage items include some retro radios and around 200 old telephones. In terms of collectability, some of these are quite valuable. And I think if we handle this collection cleverly, we're talking quite a lot of money. But when Ray comes face to face with a lifetime of possessions, will he be able to let go? Oh my God! Out of control collector Ray Byrne has had his life and home taken over by his overwhelming hoard. Until yesterday, the rooms in his flat were bursting at the seams with electronics, clothes and retro gear he'd collected over the last 15 years. I feel now I am ready to get rid of all this because I do want to lead a normal life. Expert dealer Nick Allen plans to clear Ray's home by selling off as much of his hoard as he can. Designer Abigail Ahern will then use the money to redesign the key rooms of Ray's flat. By creating a beautiful, comfortable home, Ray, for the first time, will be able to chill out, relax, dine and entertain and bring friends over, which will inspire him not to clutter it up. 
Ray's entire hoard has been moved to a warehouse. He'll be taken there and made to confront it in the hope of shocking him into changing his ways. Before that, Ray has the chance to see his flat clutter-free for the first time in 15 years. Wow, look how wow. big the room looks. Is that mine? That rug? Oh, Ray, you've got a lovely flat. I knew it was a lovely flat. Yay! <laughs> you excited? Yeah. Aww. Oh, wow. Do you know what's, what the best thing is? Actually being able to see out the window into the garden. Ray, the I... best bit is being able to walk into the room. <laughs> <laughs> Ray may like seeing his flat clutter free, but now designer Abby wants to reinvent the key areas so he's inspired to keep it that way. Morning, guys. Morning. Look at this space. Yeah. It does feel like a new beginning. I'll be able to start afresh with... Abby wants to know what style of interiors appeal to Ray. But, um, what's your kind of ideal? I think it would be a now style, but a me style. And I love my big speakers. These, these really ginormous speakers. Yeah. I'll try very hard, but we might both have to do a bit of compromising. Abby, too, has some ideas for the lounge which until yesterday was completely overwhelmed, but is now an airy blank canvas. Think library, gentlemen's club, big panelled walls painted out. Quite an inky, sexy colour. Oh, hang on. Uh, 70s big speakers uh, obviously don't fit into that setting. No, but how do you feel about the panelled gentlemen's clubby type vibe as a concept? I think it's really good as a concept. Um, the detail, you know, as I've mentioned, maybe would be open to discussion. Abby also has plans for the balcony. Now cleared, she intends to give Ray an outdoor space he can relax in. And in the bedroom, you can now see the bed, a key feature in Abby's design plan. So dream bedroom, colours, style... Actually, I, I think this room works OK as it is. Um... You like it? Yeah, I do have a feminine side. That's a good thing. I would love to give you a space that you're so proud of, you won't want to shove a load of stuff in here. Oh, you're saying all the right things. Uh, master bedroom sounds good. Perfect. Having listened to Ray's ideas, Abby thinks a gentleman's club scheme will suit the key rooms in Ray's flat. I think his hoarding got out of control and I think with a new, inspired, beautiful interior, hopefully it will stop him filling it up with stuff. Ray's living room is currently bland. It's almost a beige haze of blandness and I really want to cosy it up by painting it a really beautiful inky blue. I'm hoping it's really going to make him fall back in love all over again with his apartment. I'm getting plants such as these beautiful mimosas for the balcony, a table, a couple of chairs, so Ray can totally sit out there and enjoy the space. Ray hasn't slept in his bedroom for years, therefore my plan is to make it so sumptuous and luxurious he will never want to clutter it up again. So I'm wallpapering the wall in this beautiful padded Chesterfield type paper. It's luxurious, it's warm, it's cosy. This design doesn't come cheap, so in order for me to pull it off, I need £2,000. At the warehouse, it's crunch time. Ray must now confront everything he's hoarded over the years. For years, his home and life has been dominated by his out-of-control collection. Saying goodbye will be tough. Ray's about to come face Whoa. to face with his entire hoard. Oh, my God! Whose is all this? This can't be mine. This is amazing. Yeah. Is that your sofa? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at all the cables over there. Ray, how does it feel seeing it all laid out like this? It does actually look like the sort of things you'd find in a shop. And uh, this looks like the sort of stuff you find in a skip. Abby and Nick want Ray to come to terms with letting his hoard go. They've got a radical challenge to begin the process. Let's start taking things out that you want to keep and put them onto this table. It's got to be stuff that you're going to use, stuff that you actually want to keep for the future. Okay. No more hoarding. This is about edited and mindful selection. 
come on, let's get, let's, let's get go. going. Right, all right. Ray heads straight for his beloved speaker collection. Uh, oh, right, well, OK, the ones we want to keep, start with the big ones. Julie, I'm banking on you to be on my side to help push these boys that we don't need quite so many speakers. She's right, you know, you don't need that many. Do you want that oh, great that's... big pair of kefs with the fins? Oh, definitely it is. You're going to keep oh, those? Yes. But where are you going to yeah. put them? Um, In the living room. And it's not just the speakers Ray wants to hang on to. I would like to keep uh, a vinyl uh, disc player. Uh, here's one of my fantastic mixing desks. Uh, well, you know I want to keep the amplifiers. That's a shame. Why is it a shame? I was looking forward to selling that. But Ray begins to show a sense of the bigger picture when it comes to his camera collection. So what do you want to keep? Does a classic film camera. This is it, Nick. OK. So get that one 100%. OK. Flash gun. Yes. Uh, so what else would you like to keep? Amongst all this, if I talk about 1% or 2%. Great. The, well, let's move on. Yeah. OK. Amazingly, Ray decides to let go of nearly all his cameras. This is slightly early. Agreeing to let go of so much stuff is, uh, well, it's difficult, actually, because... I was attached to a lot of it. Next, the telephones. Letting go of them would be a good call. Do you want to keep any? I'm not really attached to these anymore. After having a good collection, you, you tend to sort of lose interest and move on. Got good value. All these can go. Yes. Slowly but surely, Ray whittles down a lifetime of possessions to what he can squeeze onto just one table. OK. Baby, how do you think it's going? I don't know. I feel quite positive. It's not a miracle, is it? It is a miracle. It's a projector for progress. You're justified. Ray, I want to say how impressed I am, how you've embraced this process. I want to back that up and say it's phenomenal. Are you impressed? Because you weren't sure that Ray would let go quite so easily. No, I'm, I'm really impressed as well, Ray. Oh. Well done. Thank you. I, I feel as if I've succeeded in uh, keeping what I want. Well, this is magic. <laughs> You're already ahead of the game. Yeah, thanks, Nick. I didn't honestly believe that he would be so easygoing about letting stuff go. Oh, he grabbed this opportunity, didn't he? He manned up to the challenge and just seized the day. So are you going to be able to work your magic? Are you going to be able to get me a lot of money? Look, you know I'm going to do my best. Nick must now help Ray get rid of his unwanted stuff to make sure it never returns to the flat and to raise money towards Abby's redesign of the key rooms. A large part of Ray's hoard is lower value stock, so Nick decides a second hand market is the perfect retail environment. Established 700 years ago with over 200 stalls, Ashton Market is one of the biggest and busiest in the country. Yeah. Come on, people. Come on, it's Go a hard buy. sell today. Yeah. yeah. If they pick it up, we sell it to them. Yeah. We've got masses and masses of stuff to plod through. That warehouse was chocker. And the idea is get some high prices if we can, but shift as much as possible. Morning. 25 and 20. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's a slow start. An hour has passed, and the prospective buyers aren't forthcoming with their cash. We want 25 quid for it. It's 1945 to 52. Nick's determined to get a decent price for the post World War II hat. 18 is it? No, sorry, it's really, he's it's right to stick to his guns. We will we'll get 25 quid for that. Unwilling to let the deal fall through and keen to shift some of the hoard, Nick packages up the helmet with one of Ray's old cameras. Right, sir, give us that £20 note and you can have both items. There's that, thank you very much. Thank you. It's not only the military piece Nick succeeds in getting good money for. 1938 Field Morse Code communication machine. Yeah, really nice, yeah. Uh, 25. No. 35. For me in the middle, 30 quid. Are you happy? Well, what I hope for more. Go on, 32. 31. All right. Yes. Yay! 31. Nice one. Brilliant. Yeah, thank, thank you. Brilliant. Let's your money, mate. All oh, right, thank you. Thank you.
there will always be a market for rare wartime memorabilia, because people love to own a bit of history. Take this pristine World War I German helmet, a valuable item on its own. It also comes complete with a photo of the original owner wearing it, which dramatically increases its value. Together they're worth £1,700. This mint condition German paratrooper helmet from World War II had one very careful owner. Paratrooper helmets are quite rare, so this one's worth a whopping £6,500. And this World War II guard knife, complete with leather scabbard, values £785. But not everything costs a fortune. If you fancy some military memorabilia, this unique cap was made in 1915 from a disused shell by a soldier on the front line, and it cost just £85. Back at the market, Ray's finally getting into the idea of selling rather than buying. That radio there. Look at those, 10 each. That's a tenner. Lovely. Have you got change, mate? 12 change? Don't you love these 20s coming in? I thought it might be difficult to sell off my precious junk, but giving the stuff over to the customer, getting the money for it, that's a really good feeling. 50 each. Where have I been all this time? Just buying, keeping stuff. This is the way, isn't it? This is the way forward. What was it you said, Maestro? 350. Done. Done. And Julie is encouraged by Ray's efforts. <laughs> it's really nice to see Ray letting his stuff go. Um, and he's seen that the people that his stuff is going to, which is also a nice thing. But with only an hour of trading left, Nick is determined to sell as much of Ray's hoard as possible. Come on then, 35. Right, shake his hand. Done. You got a deal. Oh, that's 20. 40. No, no more to go. That is a no more. Do you want 40 quid? Go on then. Feeling generous. Music to my ears. Boom, boom. Ladies, the boss. Uh, go on. <laughs> It's been a long day at the market, and they're keen to see what start they've made towards the £2,000 target budget that Abby needs for the redesign. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, which is 410. 410? Wow! 410 pounds. Well done. Well done, you. Well done. Well done, you. Oh, thank you, Nick. How so, well? you're buying the beers? This feels very much like a new chapter for me because I haven't been sad to see it all go. The added bonus is getting money for it. That's a real incentive. If I can keep doing this to get rid of any more stuff that I've still got left over, that would be great. It hasn't been hard at all persuading me of getting rid of anything today. Ray's done it all very happily on his own. I think I've sold some of the stuff a bit cheaper than he would have liked, but I just wanted it gone. And I wanted Ray to get something for it rather than it knocks out and end up going back with him. Just over £400 at the market is a solid beginning, but they're still nearly £1,600 short of what Abby needs. So it's vital Ray's enthusiasm for selling his hoard continues. But will it? Everything 350 for the like of stuff, all right? I was hoping for uh, more. And everyone does. Compulsive collector Ray Byrne is desperate to free himself from his overwhelming hoard of possessions. I've now made a conscious decision to get rid of all this stuff because I do want to lead a normal life. Having agreed to let go of a large amount of his hoard, he successfully raised just over £400, selling some of the lower value items at a second hand market. Where have I been all this time? Just buying. Keep it stuff. This is the way, isn't it? This is the way forward. Morning, boys. Morning. Morning. Now she has some money, Abby can start work on the redesign of the key rooms in Ray's flat. I want to create a really beautiful, cosy interior because it was so cluttered with junk in Ray's space, you couldn't see even a tiny bit of floor space. So now he's going to have lots of different zones. He's going to have a dining area, he's going to have a relaxing, chill out area, and a bedroom. So it's incredibly exciting that he can actually use the house as a functioning space anymore and not just a dumping ground. 
In the living room, Abby wants to create a grand interior reminiscent of a gentleman's club. Here's the wallpaper. It's cool, hey? That's really cool. Did you get loads of it? Yeah. So all of that's going that side, which will look really nice with the blue. Yeah. But Abby will need more money before she can make a start on the bedroom. So the pressure's on for Nick to get a good price for Ray's collection of vintage cameras. They're taking the lot to one of the largest camera exchanges in the northwest. Now these are the best dealers. We get the most money and work our way down. Okay. Doesn't matter if we don't sell everything, but what we will do is get the maximum money for the best items in the hoard. The vast majority of Ray's cameras are not worth much, but a precious few are highly collectible. Right. Oh, Nick. Good to see you. Thank nice you to much. see you. Yeah. Nick has split Ray's collection into two lots. Saving the best till last, he negotiates a price for the lower value cameras first. These can be worth a few bob, can't they? Yeah, I, I, I would say even in this condition, we could we could do 25, maybe even 30 pounds on, 30 on that one. 30, yeah. 30 is better than 25, fill. is it? I prefer uh, 40. <laughs> That's worth 10 to us. 40, yeah. I'd pay 10 for that. We'd give you 5 pounds for That's that, between 20 and 40 pounds. That's the other end sign. I'd give you 10 pounds for that. You know, maybe 20, 20. pounds for yep. that. The dealer offers 210 pounds for the first lot. Nick is now hoping to at least double their money by selling him the rarer, more desirable pieces. So this is Leica, and this is about the best name that uh -huh. we'll find. Yeah. That's a Vidom finder. Yeah, um, I think that's an original uh, lens uh, wide, is it? What yeah. I'm not seeing at the moment is yeah. stuff which is yeah. in top condition. Yeah, and I know that's a Leica 3B from 1935. Right, well, you've done your homework. What we've got to assess is the condition of this. Um, if I look through it, I can see, well, the range finder appears clear, and so does the viewfinder. So what have we got, including this rather nice leather case? Everything 350 for the Leica stuff, all right? I was hoping for uh, more. And everyone does. Everyone yeah. does. Um, oh, could I push you to 380 for that Leica parcel? Would you, would you go another 30 on top? I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't. Right. It's, it's old gear, and I can show you shelves full of similar stuff that we have already. For 360? 360. I don't want to seem like a hard guy which never moves his price. I'll say 360. For... I think it's great money. I really do. Yeah. Professionally. 360. So that makes five... 70. 70. Could we write a cheque for 600? Well, I was wanting to say 500. I'll go with... Uh, I think we better stick uh, to the 570 then. <laughs> 570, we've got a deal. All right, do you want to shake on it? It's up to you. Yeah. But I actually think we've done really well. This is okay. a fantastic me, uh... place to bring vintage cameras. Deal. Excellent. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, thank you. That's, That's wonderful. wonderful. That's, That's a really successful good. deal. Yeah. 570 for those 20 cameras is an excellent deal. That guy wanted stock, his retail prices are very strong, and he was prepared to pay 50% of what he sells the stuff for. That is a brilliant deal. And with the money rolling in, Ray's getting a taste for waving goodbye to his hoard. I'm really chuffed. I felt a bit tingly uh, inside at clinching the deal and becoming a seller, and it was a really good feeling. Back at Ray's flat, the redesign is well underway. The gentleman's club living room is taking shape, and Abby has finally made a start on the bedroom. I think it's a really cool paper. It's a really cool paper. Chesterfield-style wallpaper is going up to add texture and luxury. I think it's quite beautiful. You can create stylish bedrooms in so many ways. Adding layers of pattern and plain linen to this grand bed adds glamour to create a sophisticated look. Metal beds can feel harsh and sterile, so it's a great idea to add colourful, funky fabrics to soften the feel and give an unexpected cool twist. For a traditional luxury look, textiles are key. Combining the softness of velvet against embroidered linen provides a visual feast that gives the room a wow factor. In Ray's bedroom, Abby's using colourful fabric to add texture and warmth. She hopes the new interior will tackle his hoarding habit, but to complete the scheme, she needs Nick and Ray to meet a target of £2,000. 
So far, Nick has made around half that, but encouragingly, Ray has been keen to sell off much of his hoard. The next potential buyer is one of the biggest retro dealers in Manchester. You must be Paul. I am. Nick's hoping to sell all the vintage telephones, record players and radios, but a lot of them aren't in great condition. It's going to be a tricky deal. These guys have got millions of items in here worth hundreds of thousands of pounds. It looks like we've got a lot of stock, but to be honest, in the real world, this is just a drop in the ocean. But with a bit of banter, hopefully, we can carve a deal. It's a bit of fun. Yeah, it's like a ray gun, isn't it? It's got all the imagination, isn't it? <laughs> but Ray has started to enjoy the feeling of letting go a little too much. Any good? Uh, I don't know a lot about. Take it off your hands for a fiver. Yeah, we'll probably give you a fiver. Oh, you, you've taught me. <laughs> I've not exactly taught you very well if you're giving things away at a fiver. You've not been listening, mate. Okay. Nick attempts to take control of the situation by negotiating a price for the whole lot. 750 the whole parcel. I think it's a bit too much, that, Nick. I do for the work I've got to put into it. OK. I'll do 500. We can't do it. I think Ray would like to take some of the better items back. 750 the whole parcel. Hang on. But well, what did you want for it? He, said he, you he, he wanted, it, it, he, said he wanted as much five. as possible. Well, if you want it, yeah, if you... Should you say 600? Well, that's fine, yeah, 600. You all right with that? OK. Ray, that is brilliant to see you get involved. Your yeah. confidence is coming up, yeah. you're fighting your corner. Yeah. But I could have had you more money. We got a little bit less for, for we don't want to, You don't want to see if me work that, hard for an hour to get you more for the no cameras point. and just give it to this just guy. Our money. <laughs> Ray's eagerness to close the deal has lost him up to £100. Ray has unloaded more of his hoard, but with all of the more valuable items sold, they are still £350 short of the target budget. Nick calls Abby with the news. Hey, Nick. Is there any more money coming in? Because I'm still over budget then. It's not looking good with the money situation. Right. As it just means that I've now got to seriously consider eliminating stuff from the redesign. So it's a bit of a problem. Every £20 is going to count, as far as I'm concerned. In fact, every three quid, every pound is going to count. Thank you. Take care. Speak to you tomorrow. Bye. I, I am upset. It's just, it's a horrible feeling. And it's even worse because it's Ray. This house didn't function. And now I've got it to look really cool. I've got to say, sorry, Ray, could have done that, but didn't quite get enough money. So, yeah, it just feels, it's just not a good feeling. Abby has been working hard redesigning the key rooms in out-of-control collector Ray's flat. She spent nearly £2,000, but not everything in Ray's redesign has cost a fortune. I've made Ray a bedside light out of one of his old circuit boards. Ray had hundreds of the things, and the trouble with circuit boards is you can't just take them to a dump and landfill them. So, simple, simple little kitchen lights behind it, because it's quite sculptural and really cool. And she's made sure to incorporate some of Ray's beloved speakers into the scheme. The speakers have been a bone of contention between Ray and I, so... I'm only putting in two, and I'm also hiding them behind curtains so you don't see them. Abby hopes the dramatic new interior will inspire Ray to keep his home and life hoard-free in the future, but she's still £350 short of her target budget. Nick's gone back to the warehouse in a last-ditch attempt to raise the extra funds for Ray's redesign. There's a mountain of old, used clothes, but Nick hopes to sell them as scrap material. So it's, a, it's quite a big pile. Uh, yeah. I take it you just put it on the scales, give me the price, That's simple right, as that. Yeah, being stuff, but I could probably do about. You know, I'm looking for 60 pence a kilo. You see, 60, 60 is quite a high price for the stuff that we're looking at here. 55. Can we do a deal at 55 pence? I'm thinking 50. I'm thinking 50p and we'll take it away in the van right now. That's okay with me, Nick. Great. Can we shake on it? 50 pence then. Great. Great, cool. This is a great way to get rid of a large clothing hoard, but the question is, how much will Ray's old clothes weigh in at? 
So it's been weighed. Yep. 400 kilos. Yes. That's 200 pounds. Super. You happy with that? Yeah, well, happy with that. Yeah. Well, I'd have been happy with three. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> but right. it wasn't going to happen, was it? It's all there. Okay, yep, yeah, super. Another 200, Ray? Wow, that's brilliant. See you, Ray. It's another deal done, but they're still short of the budget and have stuff to shift. Nick continues selling to house clearance dealers in the hopes of raising the rest of the budget. Eighty-five pounds, and I'll take this. Okay. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you, Nick. I need seventy quid. Can I push it out? The cable 60. is going to help. It's got to be seventy. I can't go under budget. I need to get over, but I need yeah. to hit the target. Go ahead. 70. Yeah, seventy quid. Yeah. Wait, are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm told a few bits in. Like I can't believe we've just got that money for that stuff. That's broken junk good and bad, we've actually just gone over the budget I needed. We've hit the target. I'm going to phone Abby. Nick, hi. I've got, I've got good news. What's the news? Tell me. I made another 155 on all the broken televisions and broken printers. We've done it. Thank you so much. It means that I don't have to eliminate. Much appreciated, Nick. Thank you. I'm really pleased. And Ray has actually let go of a load of stuff. It's, it's just fairy tale ending. Yay! He took the money, he got the money, so now I can complete my scheme. Ray can have a balcony and sit out there in the spring and just enjoy the view. And I'm excited and I cannot wait for Ray and Julie to see it because I think it looks incredible. Three weeks ago, Ray came face to face with his entire hoard. Oh my God! But he agreed to let go of a large part of it and did his best to help Nick sell it off. Where have I been all this time? Just buy it, keep it stuff. This is the way, isn't it? This is the way forward. Now he and his friend Julia are back to see the redesigned rooms in his flat. I'm expecting to see a miracle when I go into Ray's flat, from where it was to just a normal room. I'm feeling uh, quite anxious and trepidatious about seeing my flat after it's been decluttered. I don't really know uh, until I get up there and have a look. Hello. Hello. Wow. Ray's bedroom used to be so full of junk, he couldn't get into it, let alone sleep in it. It's been transformed into a luxurious, tranquil space for that perfect night's sleep. <laughs> I'm impressed. Are you? Yeah, and uh, that bedspread is fab. I wanted to have a lie on it as soon as it... Oh, wow! Well. <laughs> the wallpaper gives the impression of a leather padded wall. It's not cheap, but it really makes a statement. The addition of colourful furniture and a throw add drama, while the circuit board light is a subtle reminder of Ray's old ways. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. I think it looks brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's so... Light and airy. Where, where does he put all his stuff? <laughs> He's not bringing it back. So far, it's a hit with Ray. OMG. Three weeks ago, the living room was crammed full of junk, with just enough space for Ray's makeshift bed on the floor. Now Abby's created a gentleman's club environment, complete with panelled walls, a sitting area and a dining area. And there's no bed in sight. Wow. Is that wallpaper? Is that panelling? Wallpaper. That is fantastic. Oh, look at that table. Oh, that looks fantastic. I've got a patio. Abby's given Ray an outside space he can enjoy. Hopefully, now, you can actually use it as a functioning living yeah. slash dining room. You can entertain, you can yeah. watch TV, you can listen to music, you can eat supper, and you can sit on your balcony overlooking your lovely green. It's an order. It's <laughs> an order. Ray, speakers. <laughs> I've hidden them. <laughs> you didn't see them, did you? No, I didn't. Um, do you know what? I'm absolutely chuffed. That's brilliant. It's a new life. Yeah, I do, I do feel that. I feel quite emotional about it. I might not be showing it, because I keep lots inside, but uh, it's, uh, it's sort of magical, really. Keep up the good work. Oh, oh, oh. Keep an eye on him with you. Thank you, Ray. Thanks, Abby. Thank you, Thank you guys. It's been a pleasure.
I'm feeling absolutely fantastic. It's amazing the way the flat looks now compared to how it was before. Wow! It's an amazing feeling to see Ray so relaxed and comfortable in his own home, free of all that clutter, in a beautiful environment. And I, I think there's going to be a new Ray. <laughs> I'm delighted, I'm pleased, I'm excited. That was the exact reaction I wanted from Ray. Maybe I'm being a bit naive, but I honestly think he's really got it, that when you have a space that is really beautiful, it lifts your spirits, it makes you feel elevated, and you don't want to clutter it up again. Ray's happiness is plain to see, as he now has the space to entertain friends in his flat. Having no, stuff uh, around him didn't make him happy. This. I'm sure will make him happy. I can't see how it can't. It would make anybody happy. It does feel like a new beginning having people over here. I feel really chuffed that uh, people want to come in here. People want to have a look and uh, I don't mind. Uh, I want them to come in here. That's great. It's brilliant.